about knitting, crocheting, and always all of the yarny goodness that I love. If you are new, welcome, and if you are a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you so much uh, for stopping by again. I've been gone for about a month, but I wanted to uh, make sure I hopped on and shared what's going on in the month of December. This is such a great time. Well, it's a great time for everybody, but I think uh, knitters and crocheters or people who love to create things. This is just a super fun uh, time of the year for all of those creative things. Uh, so besides YouTube, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as CB Crafty Girl and those links will be found down below as well as all of the patterns uh, that I talk about. In our Ravelry uh, we do have a Carla Knits Ravelry group, and we currently have two make-alongs going on that have been going on the entirety of 2023. So <laughs> we are coming to an end, guys. Uh, one is a Love Your Stash Mail, so using yarns that have been in your stash prior to 2023 or mixing yarns from your stash with some new things this year. Uh, so there is a finished object and chatter thread. And then there is also one general thread for a blanket make along. So making blankets or working on blankets that may have uh, been hibernating for a while, working on scrappy blankets. Um, so those, those are the things that are going on in the Ravelry group. Uh, in January, uh, the first podcast in January, in the new year, <laughs> it's hard to believe it's almost here, I will be pulling um, final winners uh, in each of those threads. Uh, uh, so quarterly prizes uh, for the year is what I have been drawing. So look forward to that in January. Um, <coughs> See, I, I am recording somewhere different today, so this is in my living room. I did this last December as well. I thought it would be fun to uh, record in front of the Christmas tree, so I know the sound is going to be a little different here because this is a bigger a bigger area. <laughs> so I hope I hope it's okay though. Um, we do have our Christmas decorations up. We put them up uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Um, and have been enjoying them, so I thought I would record out here today. Uh, let's see, what I am wearing. I am wearing a finished object. This I uh, worked on, have been working on for, I think, two months. I believe I started it in October. I'd have to double check to be sure. Uh, but this is a crochet a crochet cardigan. I guess I will stand up a little bit, see if you can see. I don't know how much you can see there. Um, so a crochet cardigan by uh, Amber Zumbrin, or her shop's name is Heartfully Stitched. So a crochet cardigan. Uh, I knit this in, uh, let's see, Lion Brand Touch of Alpaca, and it did take, and it's in the crimson colorway, and it did take 10 skeins. So this definitely did eat up yarn. Um, I enjoyed crocheting this pattern. I was getting a little tired towards the end on the, on the sleeves, but this is a very, very nice warm cardigan. I wasn't sure because I've been knitting knitting garments for a while now and haven't crocheted anything in a while and in the past I really didn't like how crocheted garments turned out so I kind of wanted to give it a try again but I think this is a wonderful um, cardigan for going outside you know no coat I think this is plenty warm uh, it has you know 10% alpaca in it um, but it is very warm it's a worsted weight um, so nice and thick. Uh, let's see, is there anything else I wanted to say? I, I'm really happy with how this crocheted garment turned out and I could definitely see myself um, making, you know, something else crochet uh, a garment in, in the future. 
um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take this out today uh, with you know no coat. We have been so cold for a while, and then this week we're getting back up into the 50s and even 60s. So this probably will be too warm, <laughs> but I think um, I have some errands to run later uh, this morning or early afternoon. So I think it'll still be it'll still be okay, or maybe just to throw on if I get chilly in the house. So really happy with this finished object. And uh, Heartfully Stitched, she does have a number of crocheted garments. So if you are a crocheter, I think crochet garments have come a long way in the last, I would say last 10 years, last five years. So uh, you might wanna check out her shop. All right, I have a number of finished objects since I haven't been here for a while. Uh, the first one I am going to insert a picture of, either here or here. <laughs> uh, so in November, uh, we traveled over two weekends. Uh, one weekend we traveled to uh, Wichita, Kansas for my husband Jeff to play an organ recital. And I just wanted a fun, easy little project and I, I made the pumpkin pie coasters. Um, my daughter Jenna loves pumpkin things and her roommate at college is a crocheter. So I thought it would be fun uh, just to do this and they looked really cute. So pumpkin pie coasters, this is by Eat, Pray and Crochet on Etsy. Um, I used Knit Picks Dishy, uh, the white for the little whipped cream, uh, the color linen for the crust, and the color sun-baked sun -baked for the pumpkin pie itself, the pumpkin pie color. Um, these were really fun and easy to crochet up. Not very practical as coasters um, with that whipped cream, as you can maybe imagine. The whipped cream little, little part on there makes it a little bumpy but if you have a wider based mug, I think if you had a wider based mug, it will sit fine on the coaster. So just, or it can be, you know, just a fun little decoration, which I assume that's probably what Jenna is using it for. But I just thought it was something really fun for the month of November, you know, coming upon Thanksgiving. So I really enjoyed crocheting those. Um, I have finished some dishcloths, although I realized I have not woven in ends yet. Uh, these I am planning to gift to my sister for Christmas. Um, <laughs> so I will, <laughs> they look kind of rumply right now, but here are, they've been folded up in a bag for a while. So the, this was also a really good travel project. So I have I have a light blue and I have a gray. And again, I, I apologize, they are kind of crumply. So I think I will be weaving in ends and um, blocking these before I gift them. But I have a set of four of these. The pattern that I used was by Carolyn Stanton, uh, also known as Carol, Carousel Design and I, I got this pattern idea uh, from Amy of Noble Character Crafts and also from a number of viewers as I was looking for a cloth that um, maybe wasn't so wonky looking with the corners. So I think, I think it's pretty good. I do think it's pretty good. So the colors uh, and yarn that I used on those, uh, Knit Picks Dishy, which I really enjoy using I, I really enjoy using that. Um, and that's, yeah, Knit Picks Dishy for the coasters too. So um, it's kind of a Knit Picks, <laughs> Knit Picks episode. Uh, so the two colors, this is in the silver colorway. So I just wanted kind of a basic gray and then in the dewdrop colorway. So I will need to uh, do that very soon get those ends woven in and then I think I will probably block those just so that they look really nice um, presenting them as a Christmas gift <laughs> also and I'm getting yarn all over me now sorry also for my sister I finished a pair of socks 
So these are uh, DK weight socks. Uh, I used the DK weight vanilla sock pattern by Crazy Sock Lady Designs. And I, I have been looking at this purple skein of yarn on my shelf for a while and decided I really wanted to, to make a DK weight pair of socks. So this yarn is by a homespun house and it's in the dream fast colorway. And I really love how they turned out. I just think they are so, so pretty. So that will be, that will be the Christmas gift um, for my sister, Laura. Some dishcloths and a new pair of snuggly socks. Um, so I enjoyed, I enjoyed the DK weight socks and I really do like them because they go so fast and I came across the podcast, uh, what is it? Um, this yellow farmhouse, is that right? Yeah, I think this yellow farmhouse and she has a couple, actually several worsted weight sock patterns out. Um, and so I thought, well, I'm going to try that. So I made uh, I'm just calling these my worsted cable socks, but the pattern is actually a uh, pumpkin patch cabin socks by this yellow farmhouse. And I used Knit Picks Wool of the Andes in the Dill Heather colorway. And here is how they turned out. So I think these were super fun. Now Wool of the Andes does not have any nylon in it but I don't plan on these being a hard wearing sock. I will not be wearing these out in, in shoes or anything or boots. Uh, these are just gonna be for cozying at home. Although I did try them on and they fit snug enough that I could wear them in boots. I think that would be really, really fine. But I'm just gonna use them more for um, cozy, cozy slippers, so. Again, being worsted weight, they knit up really, really fast. So I actually have some more of the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes in a couple different colors that I, I would like to make some more socks. Maybe this pattern or maybe you know one of her other sock patterns. But if you like socks and you like fast projects, this would be really fun. And if you just want something cozy to treat yourself to this month, a cozy pair of worsted weight socks would be a great project to treat yourself uh, to. All right, this is moving right along. I, let's see, I saw a post on Instagram for a test knit and I thought, and I don't do too, too many of them uh, just because I don't like the pressure I like the idea of, of testing new designs or new patterns, but um, the pressure, especially of sweater designs, um, it's a big, big time commitment. <laughs> and it's a big money commitment too for a sweater. So I, I tend to go for smaller projects. And I saw this Yarn Cozy um, test knit by, uh, or asking for test knitters by Erica Beardmore who is so simply Erica on Instagram. And so I reached out and she let me test knit this for her. So it is a cute little yarn cozy. I've got some yarn in there. I think the bottom is just as pretty, but pretty lace pattern. This knit up in a couple, a couple evenings. So, you know, basically it's like making part of a sock and then finishing early, which is really fun. <laughs> so yeah, this was nice. And I think I said this, but I really love how the bottom of this looks too. I just think it's, it's really pretty. Um, it almost looks like a snowflake with those parts of the lace around the edge. But the yarn I used for this uh, was a Christmassy themed yarn. This was from an advent a few years ago by the Teeny Button Studio, and it was a Nutcracker advent, and actually the name of this skein of yarn, this was a full skein of yarn, uh, is the Nutcracker. Um, I did not use this yarn to make a pair of socks. 
I have put this yarn in a couple, maybe a couple smaller projects here and there. Um, but I really, it's, it's a really pretty yarn. So I really enjoyed um, knitting it up and how quickly it went. And now I have a new yarn cozy. So a very fun project. So uh, if you follow So Simply Erica on Insta Instagram, I'm sure she will let you know when this pattern is available. And she does have a couple, I believe, sock patterns on Ravelry already. So you may want to check her out. She was a new to me designer. All right, I think that takes us through finished objects. I'm just looking around my living room here. I've got lots of, <laughs> lots of things all over the place. Yes, okay, works in progress. Um, let's see. I put my love note on hold. You know, I was working, if you've been following for a while, you know I'm working on that dark purpley color love note. And I am almost done with the body of that, but I can see it sitting in a bag over there, but I think I will show that another time. Um, so the things that I'm going to concentrate on in December, um, I am not going to work on the love note sweater and I have that, um, greeny mustard color chalette, um, betangled chalette. I'm not going to work on those things right now. I'm, I'm concentrating on some smaller projects. So, um, mini skeins, uh, a lot of us like to, uh, get mini skeins in the month of December. And I did host a swap in the Carla Knits group. And so I was actually paired with a couple different people. So I have been um, opening and I decided to open both at the same time, even though they were a 12 day advent and I could have done one, like one through 12 and the other 13 through 24, but I decided just to go for it. <laughs> So I'm opening two every day. Um, hello to my swap partners, Rosie and Teresa. I am enjoying my um, advent calendars from you so very much. And I will share what project I am working on. Uh, I am uh, crocheting granny squares. So this is the scrappy granny square pattern by uh, Nitty Natty. And I think I'm missing one here, but that's okay. So I have kept up, I'm recording on the fifth and I have kept up with days um, one through four. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Well, one granny square seems to be missing, but she will turn up somewhere. <laughs> anyway, here I will just give you an idea of the granny squares. So Rosie, it looks like she's created somewhat of a fade. I think this was the first day. And then the second. The third. And then the fourth day, the granny square is around here somewhere, but I will show the yarn. I did make it already. So this is the yarn. So you can see that she definitely has, has a little bit of a fade going on and it's in pinks and purples, which I absolutely, and mauve. So I absolutely love this. It has been um, fun to open those up. And then uh, Teresa, uh, Let's see, where's the other one? Okay, she she didn't number them, so it's been fun just grabbing a bag each day and seeing what comes up, and they are all, you know, so varied, very fun. So varied um, and different, so it's been really fun opening it and seeing what, has, what comes up each day. So this was day one, and I believe this was day two which I have to tell you, this is um, Madeline Tosh in the Holly Festival, Holy Festival, Holly Festival, H-O-L-I. And I have loved this colorway of Madeline Tosh's for many years and have not, and I did never, I never got a skein of it. Um, 
if I am reading correctly and looking correctly online, I believe they have renamed this colorway Umbrella Sky. And I may have um, ordered some from uh, Simply Sock Yarn Company. <laughs> and I got a uh, fingering weight and a DK weight. I just think this is so, so pretty. I just love those bright little speckles on that cream background. So this is probably my favorite from Teresa so far. Then there's this beautiful like forest green and brown, which I love those colors together. I think that's really fun. And then this color is called eggplant. I don't know exactly how you will, how it will show up, but it's, there's a lot of colors and depth to this colorway. There is like dark blues, purplies. There's some hints of greenish purple in here, some grays. So it, it's a very, um, very complex color, I would say, but very beautiful in different lights. It looks different. So these, I am making granny squares with my swap partners um, advent. And I did that with my, I had shown that on the previous podcast. I was doing that with my advent from last year. And I did finish, I did finish all 12 of that. So at some point I will need to, um, you know, put these into a blanket and you know how good I am about my scrappy blankets, <laughs> but it's going to be a while before I collect, you know, enough to, uh, to make a blanket. So, um, just making two granny squares a day. It has been manageable. I think making one square a day is probably a little more manageable if I want to work on other projects. So we will see. I may I may slow down a little bit and just do one a day and try to try to finish uh, all 24 uh, this month. So that is what I'm working on with my. Oops, there's that missing. <laughs> I just reached out into my basket. There's that missing one. So that is that is my scrappy project. That is my advent project that I am working on this month. And I will share a little bit more about another advent calendar in just a little bit. Um, I am working on a couple pairs. I'm just looking where my bags are. Oops. Oh, I should share my bags. It's fun to take out the Christmas bag. So I have this cute bottle brush Christmas tree bag by Little Robin Cottage. That's what the dish cloths have been in. So I'm going to tuck those back in there. <laughs> and I'm really squishing them in here right now. <laughs> so they definitely are going to need to be blocked. My granny squares each day um, have been in this darling, darling bag. I'm going to snap it so you get the full idea. It's supposed to be like a tea bag. It's really cute. It's by Random Fandom Bags on Etsy. And, oops, <laughs> if you've watched the movie A Christmas Story, you will recognize Ralphie on there and some of the other characters. Um, that is one of my, the leg lamp. This is one of my very favorite Christmas movies. So I just thought this would be a great uh, sock size bag which it would be, but it's actually been really, really fun for those uh, little granny squares. So I, I tuck my yarn in each morning and then I get to, uh, to see, or I get to take that with me. I've been taking it to work. Um, so just a handy little thing for those granny squares. Okay, going on now, I have two Christmas socks that I am working on. And they are both Night Owl Fibers yarns. So the first is, and this is both, I just have first socks going right now for them, but very, very close. This is the March Family Christmas. And isn't that so pretty? I bought that, <coughs> excuse me, over a year. Well, I bought it, I believe, last I know I bought it in 2022 um, and I just loved it, but didn't knit it up. But I knew like throughout the year in my mind is like, I am knitting up that, 
that Christmas yarn. So it's a Little Women, the March family, Little Women themed yarn and a Christmas yarn. And so I knew I wanted to do that in the month of December. So I actually started my socks uh, mid, mid November maybe, sometime in November. So this was also a travel project uh, when we were gone in November. Uh, this is, this mini did not come with it, but I think it matches really well. And I don't know who the dyer is on that, but it was from a mini skein set. I just don't remember. But I'm loving that. And I don't think I have too many more rounds to go before, before adding in the toe. I don't think so. <laughs> then the other one, um, you know, so I said this year I've been, um, you know, thinking, okay, in December, I am gonna work on that Little Women Christmas yarn. That is that is the sock I want in it. Well, then um, Rachel came out with her Christmas 2023 colorway, and I'm like, oh, that is so beautiful, oh. But I'm like, no, if you buy that, you won't work on the other one. And you really wanna work on the other one. <laughs> so I did not get it when she had them for sale in her shop, but then after, after that was done and I kept seeing it pop up or seeing her post pictures on Instagram, I was kicking myself like, oh, Carla, why didn't you get that? You know, you loved it. So luckily Rachel has shops that she, that carry her yarn, lucky for me. So I hopped on uh, Simply Sock Yarn Company uh, and it's a good thing I don't live close to there because that would be a very dangerous store to go into. <laughs> but I got her 2023 colorway. And I think I, oh, I know I finished, yep, because I me measured this last night. I am ready for the toe on this one. Uh, so this particular uh, skein did not come with a mini, although she did have it with minis in other shops, but I figured I, I had something that could match. And so I put in this, this colorway, or this, this for the contrasting heel. And I'm still debating about, do I do that for the toe, or do I just leave the toe in the regular color? I guess I'm leaning towards popping in that, that fun, warm pink, because I think that's really pretty. It's, I don't know if it's reading more coral on there. It's definitely a pink. It came from a set. Uh, Oh, let me think about this. I want to say Niska Knits, Niska Knits, maybe, on Etsy. And it was a strawberry shortcake themed mini skein set. So many shades of like this strawberry shortcake -y, uh colorway. And I just thought this, this was so pretty to go with this Christmas yarn. So Rachel, I absolutely love this Christmas yarn. This is beautiful. And I'm and I love the Little Women one too. I'm so glad that I was able to, to get this yarn. So it has been a joy to knit up. So, so maybe I will get um, both socks completed, you know, both pairs completed in the month of December. Um, very close on both of them and it's only the fifth, although things get kind of busy this month. So we'll see, but, um, so those are the projects that I really am focusing on, the granny squares and the two Christmas socks. I have said on past podcasts that I was almost done with the Christmas knitting. Um, so I finished Laura's socks, I finished the dishcloths. Um, I am waiting on yarn to knit my brother-in-law a hat quickly. And I think I am going to use um, the pattern J Jason's cashmere hat. I have not knit this before, but I would like I would like to do this. And I'm just I just ordered. Uh, let's see, is it Lion Brand Heartland yarn in the Canyon colorway? So it's black with some flex in it. Um, but I would like to get this knit up quickly because my brother-in-law and his family live in Canada, so I do need to get you know their package in the mail pretty quickly here, but things are still trickling in gifts wise. So I think, I think I'll be okay. I think it's supposed to come today or tomorrow. So <laughs> I will, I will be ready to do that. So then the socks will probably have to, uh, 
take a little bit of a back seat while I work on that hat. Um, let's see. I, I guess we're going to go into a little bit of more Advent chatting for my additional Advent calendar. Excuse me while I bend down a minute. And um, I'm going to open my swap skeins for today. I thought that would be fun to do on camera. So I will do that. I'm going to share the advent calendar that I purchased. And then today I do have some stash enhancements since it's been a while since I've shared some stash enhancements. So um, we'll get into that right now. But first, let's open, let's open the advent skeins from Teresa and from Rosie. Okay, so the numbered one is from Rosie. This is day five. Oh, and we're continuing with the pinky purple theme. So Rosie, you just, you have curated a beautiful fade in this advent calendar. So this is a lovely, oh, a lovely purple. And it's even got some hints of um, like some tanny brown or purpley brown in there. That is lovely. And then some pretty stitch markers. I love these. Look at the sweet stitch markers she included with that skein. So that is so pretty. So that is going to be fun to crochet up today. And then uh, Teresa, I just grabbed a random one. And she's got them in these really cute little popcorn bags, red and white. I just think that is adorable. Let's see for today. Ooh, a beautiful green. Oh, I love green. Oh, yep. As much as I love pinks too, I love my greens as well. This is very pretty. This is by Zen Yarn Garden. It's a silk single in the color guacamole. Oh, and that is so pretty. That is so beautiful. Oh, and that is really, really soft. So it has been fun um, just seeing what colors. And then this is a different base. I don't know if I've, it's a 75 Superwash Merino, 15% cashmere and 10% silk. And boy, is that soft. So I would not use these in socks, but I am going to put this into my crochet blanket. And that's gonna be a beautiful green in there. So thank you guys for my beautiful swap skeins and goodies. And then the advent that I purchased this year was by Suburban Stitcher. And she was doing um, a pink Christmas. And if you follow me for a while, you know I love pink. And hers is definitely a fade too. So let's see, this is day one, just gorgeous. Day two, let's see, day three. So those are pretty similar. And day four. So little subtle differences between these three. So I am not, I am not doing anything with these minis right now. Um, luckily she has which day is on here, which is really, really handy. So I don't need to keep them in a package or anything. I'm just going to hang on to the minis. I will, you know, lay them all out once I have opened them all and decide what I want to do. Uh, it did come along with a pattern by Telly Bee Knits and it looks like a beautiful shawl. So I, I am, you know, I did uh, download that pattern and I'm getting the daily clues for, or pattern um, parts for that shawl. And it looks very beautiful and that might be something I do. Uh, but I just want to wait and see and I did not want to put the pressure on myself to knit because I've done that before, like knit all 20 grams each day. And that's a lot of knitting <laughs> to keep up with. Um, I also thought about the hibernation shawl. No, Habitation Throw, Habitation Throw by Helen Stewart. I did make one 
with a stress knits advent before. And I really enjoyed that. And it's a lovely light little blanket. Um, and I think a pink, a pink blanket like that would be, would be really nice. Uh, let's go ahead and open day five from the Suburban Stitcher Advent. Very pretty. So it definitely goes along with all of these. Yes, so day five. Oh, that is so pretty. Yeah. So we will see what that wants to become. <laughs> so I think that's all about mini skeins. Now I'm gonna share some stash enhancement. Um, let's see, I think first, I think, I think I tend to stash or to, to buy a lot of yarn in the end or towards the end of the year because I, and this is, this is so silly because I think, okay, next year I'm going to do really good, um, knitting from stash. And I looked at my projects last night on Ravelry and I have done a good job of knitting from stash, but I equally like to knit with new yarns as they come out. So I guess it's good to balance, but I tend to order yarn towards the end of the year with the thought that, okay, I'm not buying yarn next year, which we all know that's not true. <laughs> but anyway, um, Danny, who I've talked about before, she is Lumberjack Yarn on um, Instagram, and she has, her shop is Lumberjack Yarn. She is from Muskegon, Michigan, which is so very close to where my parents lived. I had relatives um, growing up that lived in Muskegon. So um, I, she had a sale and she has some beautiful DK weight sock skeins. So I love all of these. This one is called Rainbow Bridge and the speckles on here are just stunning. And she included some little light bulb stitch markers, which I use a lot. So this is a um, DK weight and it is a sock, 75-25. Um, so 75% superwash nylon, or 75% <coughs> superwash merino, 25% nylon. And then this skein, this came as a sock set and she included two 20 gram minis with this. <coughs> Sorry guys, I don't have a water handy with me right now, but I may need to go get some. This color is just gorgeous too, that rosy, rosy, dark, plummy, I don't even know how to describe it. It is just beautiful, but it's called rhubarb. I just, I love that because we really love rhubarb here. <coughs> And it just, I think that is so, so pretty. And again, it's a sock, a sock DK weight yarn. So I think I see some more DK weight socks in my future. And I ordered three sets from her because I just could not choose which I wanted to do. And I think she absolutely nailed this colorway. This is blueberry cobbler. Look at that little bit down there. That is so, so pretty, Danny. I absolutely love that. So um, please go check her shop out. Um, I, her pictures do not do the yarn justice. This is absolutely stunning. And she does, <coughs> I think your yarn goes on sale quite frequently. So um, if you follow her shop, you will uh, know when those sales are going on. But I absolutely love those, Danny. so thank you. Um, I am re-watching, uh, words fail me right now. I'm re-watching Gilmore Girls. And so I wanted to get a Gilmore Girl themed yarn, which is kind of silly, but it's just something I wanted to do. I watched it many years ago and then I'm just re-watching it on my own. So this yarn is by Sarah's Crochet Crafts. Uh, this is, um, a sock set and it's called coffee 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 sock set the mini is called oi with the poodles and I just think 
and I am not a coffee drinker. I am not a coffee drinker, but I just think this is a beautiful, I would call this more of a tonal yarn. And so I, I, I love all of my socks, you know, my self patterning, self striping, uh, variegated, but I, I really need to start putting some more tonal, tonal socks in my, in my sock wardrobe. So I thought this would be really nice and it would lend itself to maybe some kind of patterning on there. I think that would be really pretty. And speaking of patterning, I get patterns. Um, I did purchase two sock patterns yesterday. And so maybe one of those would look really good on this one. So Brenda of the Night Owl Fibers podcast, um, Brenda is the mom and Rachel is the daughter, the yarn dyer. Uh, Brenda has uh, recently designed two sock patterns and has her own Etsy shop. And so she has two beautiful patterns available for sale on there. And I actually think, I think this would work really well. So I am going to link her shop down below. Uh, if you love knitting socks as much as I do, uh, go check out her beautiful new sock patterns. All right. Um, almost done for today with the sash enhancement. Um, this was a new dyer to me. And I think this came about um, <clears throat> out of the whole Rhinebeck thing. Uh, a lot of dyers who, I can't even remember which event it was. Wolf folk? I, I don't know. I don't want to say. But there was a situation at Rhinebeck and, you know, um, they had lists of vendors on... Instagram um, to go check out and maybe support that way. And so this, this is really fun. This is Dye Mad Yarns and look at that logo. It is a goose. It is hand dyed in Ohio. Uh, the goose is really funny because we have a goose on our front porch, a cement goose. And that's definitely an Ohio thing. I'm, I'm totally assuming that this originated in Ohio. My mother-in-law had a goose. Her mom had a goose. We inherited um, grandma's goose. So she is on our front porch. We dress her for all occasions. I do need to change her into her Christmas gear or Christmas regalia or whatever because she's still wearing her Thanksgiving leaf dress <laughs> or autumn dress. Um, but uh, the goose on here just made me think, think of my goose. So that cracked me up. That's not the reason I bought the yarn. <laughs> the reason I bought the yarn is it is named Lake Michigan. So it is these beautiful blues. And this dyer did a set of um, colors for all of the Great Lakes, the five Great Lakes. <clears throat> so I actually purchased it as a mini skein set. I hope you can kind of see through the plastic. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with this yet, but you know, I grew up in Michigan. Um, my family lives very near to Lake Michigan. And so this, this was very special when I saw what this yarn was named. So names of yarn, themes, different themes, they always get me, but I think this is absolutely a gorgeous, gorgeous blue. And again, more of a tonal. So that is going to be so, so pretty. And then where did it go? Um, also, she made stitch markers. This is going to be a little hard to show. So stitch markers in the shape, shapes of the Great Lakes. So these are really, really pretty stitch markers. So I didn't want to start using these until I had shown them on here. But... So it's kind of my Michigan, Michigan yarns. That's what I think, think about. Uh, one more thing to show. Uh, after the Wichita weekend, Jeff and I traveled down to Texas uh, to visit our son, Ryan. Uh, we left on a Friday. We drove all day Friday and we came back on the Monday. So it was a very quick trip down there. Uh, but while Ryan was working on Saturday, uh, Jeff and I just did a little bit of sightseeing. And there was this 
craft village down in Waco and it was just a wonderful place to go to. It had all of these buildings you could go in. There was like a pottery, like a pottery studio, an iron forging studio. Um, there was a knitting and weaving studio. And so I got some yarn from Waco. So I guess, I don't know if it's the owner, but one of the teachers in this knitting weaving studio dyes yarns. And so this is called Fiber Crafts, Homestead Fiber Crafts. And here is the skein. This is called Cranberry Blossom. So it definitely has some Christmas feels, but I was thinking, um, you know, fall since we went down in November or cranberry, you know, near um, Thanksgiving. But I thought that was really, really beautiful. So now I have, you know, souvenir yarn from visiting Waco, where my son Ryan lives. So that will definitely become a pair of socks. So that is all I believe for stash enhancement, which is plenty. <laughs> so just a little further bit of chatter. Uh, things have been busy with all of the traveling. Uh, in addition to seeing our son Ryan, I got to see my brother David who lives about a half hour to 40 minutes south of where Ryan lives in Waco. He lives in Temple, Texas. And I had not seen my brother David and his wife in eight years since they got married in Seattle, Washington. So um, it was really, really special to get to go see David and his wife and to meet my nephews for the first time. So Josh is going, well, he's going to be seven tomorrow. And then they have twin boys, um, Caleb and Junior, who is a David. And then they have one on the way due at the end of January. So I loved getting to spend time uh, with my brother that was that was very very special to me and of course being with my son Ryan um, he's just a really fun neat person to be around and he he's an avid skateboarder so he took us to a skate park and he's really quite good so I may insert some pictures um, in here of, of uh, our Texas trip uh, this is my last week teaching for the semester so I am a piano instructor at our local college and I also teach uh, piano to elementary school age children down the road from us. Our church is down the road that way. Actually the college and church are both down that way. <laughs> so uh, this is going to to be the end and then I will be on Christmas break. So I am, I am definitely looking forward to that. Um, Let's see, I'm <laughs> just trying to think. We've got Christmas decorations up, so now it's just gonna be, we have two children's birthdays in December, our son Ryan and our daughter Jenna, so um, extra gift figuring out <laughs> and shipping for Ryan, and um, we'll get to get together with Jenna at some point to do a little birthday celebration. Uh, this past weekend was the big Christmas concerts that Jeff and the music department, the whole music department are involved in. Uh, so there were four performances of that this weekend. And then also Jenna's Christmas concert was this weekend. So we did get into Lincoln for that. Um, so just a very beautiful musical weekend. Um, my heart was so full. Um, it was just amazing music. What a wonderful start to the Advent and Christmas season. Um, so I love this time of year with the decorations and the lights and the music. So I hope that you are all enjoying your start to December and this beautiful season. Um, I may try to pop on again just to share some progress on um, mini game projects or or the Christmas socks, the hat, um, any other projects that I that I get up to this month. So I may try to pop on again this month. Um, but if not, um, I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season. And I will be back. 
I hope to be back really soon. I would love, love to hear uh, what you are up to this month. Uh, any special projects? Are you trying to finish up projects before the new year? Uh, do you have special advent projects? Are you gift knitting or crocheting? Um, are you making something special for yourself? And do you have a special Christmas memory from when you were younger? I would love to hear about that. And maybe I'll share about that um, if I do another, another video this month. So uh, I would greatly appreciate it if you would give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, consider subscribing to this channel. Um, thank you friends for being here today. I really appreciate you taking your time uh, to spend with me to catch up on all, all things crafty, knitting and crocheting. So take care and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.